Hello and welcome to this edition of Tech24 with me, Rebecca Bowering. Coming up in the programme, a one-time internet champion down on its luck. Fewer and fewer people are using Yahoo search and email services. The Sunnydale firms poach talent from its main rival, Google. So can rookie CEO Marissa Mayer get Yahoo back to its former glory? And Google's got its fingers in a new pie. The search giants launched its very own tablet. The Nexus 7 runs Android Jelly Bean. And it's cheap enough to put the wind up Amazon's Kindle Fire. Yahoo is one of the names we associate with the beginning of the internet. The web portal has been around since 1994. Via its homepage, Yahoo made the internet accessible with personalised news, weather and markets information. It also developed one of the very first search engines and email services. By 1998, over 40 million people were logging on each month. But the end of the dot-com boom and the rise of its rivals have nudged Yahoo out. Earlier this year, it laid off 2,000 employees and its stock price has been languishing. To discuss this further, I'm joined in the studio by France Van Cap business editor Matthew Warren. Thanks for being with us, Matthew. So what are the main problems at Yahoo? Well, as you've just uh, outlined there, Rebecca, it's a real turnaround task that Marissa Mayer faces. Three years of declining revenues, that's very tough for them. Also, five CEOs in the same period as well. And of course, as well as that, a lot of talent leaving the company as well, along with those, those CEOs, because they don't want to be there. There are better places for them to go and work. So she faces a real challenge to, to try and kickstart the company, to get innovation back on the agenda there, and to really give a sense of what Yahoo stands for, what that company is all about in the future. And what uh, credentials does she bring to the job? Obviously, she was at Google. She was one of their vice presidents. She was also quite a controversial pick. She was. I mean, she was at Google for many years. She was the 20th employee there and the first female engineer. She's super smart. That goes without saying, I suppose. Uh, she's also got a lot of energy. Uh, she's very personable. When you watch her speak, she's very engaging as a personality. And uh, she seems to be someone as well who takes a lot of uh, time managing her staff, getting the best out of her staff as well. But we shouldn't let that make us think that perhaps she's a very cuddly, soft person. There are already stories coming out of Yahoo that she's being very demanding with teams there, getting them to work harder and faster. And what's she done since she came to the job uh, back in July? Well, the first thing she did was announce that she's pregnant. So she's going to be taking some maternity leave, which I suspect is going to About be... two days. <laughs> ...very short indeed. I'm sure it won't be very long. Um, one of the other things that she's done that's very important is she's hired a new chief marketing officer. Now, that sent a bit of a signal because this person, Kathy Levitt, comes from Amazon... Most recently, actually, she's worked at a, a social media site called Lockers, uh, which is a, a place where fashion people can earn discounts by, by sharing the brands and the fashion picks that they like. Now, what that's suggesting to some analysts is that perhaps Maya is interested in moving Yahoo more towards an e-commerce uh, type growth sector, which, which, could be, which could be an interesting strategic move uh, for the company. It's pretty smart, actually, because Yahoo seems to be suffering from a bit of a crisis of branding, not knowing whether it's a tech company or is it a digital media company? Um, now, you've also talked about the kind of Google effect here. Of course, Marissa's bringing in some of the best that Google had to offer. Um, as we previously saw, in fact, with AOL and another executive, Tim Armstrong, who's really, he came from Google and he's really turned AOL's fortunes around. He has. Now, he was very similar in some ways. He's actually a salesperson as opposed to a product person, which Marissa Meyer is. So there's a difference there. But he was in his 30s. He'd been a long time at Google and AOL, as you say, it was one of these sort of established in the tech world, at least, companies. Now, that company's share price is actually back at around $34 now at AOL. Now, what did he do? Well, he gave a lot more focus to the company. He made some high profile moves as well. You might remember he bought the Huffington Post, for example. He's also invested in a patch, which is a local news service. Not doing brilliantly, but he's made these kinds of moves that have given some confidence back to the company. So it's hoped that perhaps uh, Maya can bring some of some of that energy as well and some of that focus and direction back to the company. To make a Yahoo a company that you just can't leave, as many people say Google is. Many thanks for that, Matthew Warren. Stay with us. We'll be shifting the focus to Google's product strategy in part two.
Look out, Google has entered the tablet market. The Nexus 7 will be released in Europe this month. It's built and co-branded with Taiwanese firm Asus, and it runs on Jelly Bean, the latest version of Google's Android OS. Top features include a 1.2 megapixel camera, a quad-core processor, 1280 by 800 pixel display, Wi-Fi, Bluetooth, GPS, and NFC. At 7 inches, it's smaller and lighter than the iPad, closer, in fact, to the dimensions of Amazon's Kindle Fire. It's also lighter on the pocket, 249 euros for the 16 gigabyte version. Now, Matthew, Google is gunning for that number two space in the tablet market just below the iPad, as Amazon did. Is that a wise move for tech firms that want to compete with Apple? I think it is. Just playing here already with the uh, with the, the product. The there. It's, it's, I mean, the, as you said, the iPad's done fantastically well uh, for Apple, and this is this is a this is a sector that Google can't afford to be out of. Really, now, of course, the Kindle Fire has uh, has taken second place uh, in the market. There are reports that they're going to announce as well a new updated version of that, and Google needs to be part of that. They don't want to just be limited to to being a, a search company. They want to be a hardware company and a software company as well and get a bigger slice of this pie. And let's not forget as well that there are very strong rumours that Apple will also be launching its own mini iPad. And uh, of course, that will that will really intensify competition because as we know, Apple has lots more apps. Apple has better content as well. At least it's, it's managed to build up a, a bigger stock of content as well. So it seems like the second place space is where this uh, tablet war is going next, as you say, with the possible iPad mini. People are also always talking about the possibility one day of there being a, a Facebook tablet. Tell us, though, what does Google have to gain from the release of this tablet in terms of its Android uh, OS system? Because at the moment it's very fragmented, isn't it? Android perhaps we're going to see something coming together here where we see uh, the hardware and the software go hand in hand. That's right, and uh, it must have been pretty galling actually for Google in a way to see its Android system being used by Kindle Fire uh, to and, and taking a much bigger uh, share of the market. And you could argue that perhaps this is a very strategic move by by Google to 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 build interest uh, in in the Android system by launching its its own model. And of course, this is using the most updated and the, the latest version of that uh, that system. Uh, and also, as as well as that, tr encouraging more people to develop apps. Uh, for it building more content as well uh, to, to really help them to build this as, a, as an ecosystem uh, in a way. And the same, I guess, with its app store, Google Play, which has been rebranded from the Android market. Not many people uh, even know about it. So the idea is, I guess, that this is a, a big sort of publicity coup to push, as I say, the whole uh, ecosystem together. Would you buy one, Matthew, 240 I think euros? it's good. I've been, I've been playing with it a little bit, perhaps too much with the games, as you can see. And, uh, <laughs> but it's a, very, it's a very nice app. I mean, I have an iPad already, and uh, this, this smaller size makes it just that little bit more portable, but still with a screen that you can use. And I have to say, it works, works well. Well, uh, functionality is very good. Thank you ever so much, Matthew Warren, for being my guest on the programme this week. It is, in fact, my very last broadcast from the Tech24 studio. It's been a great pleasure hosting the show, and thank you to all our viewers for your support, enthusiasm and feedback. Do continue the conversation via Facebook and our Twitter feed. Our closing clip this week also says goodbye. It remakes the classic song So Long, Farewell from The Sound of Music with just one singer playing the part of six members of the Von Trapp family.